Okay, so we're going to see what happens now is what happens if we put a right triangle on the coordinate plane? What does that have to do with Sokotoa? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot some point in the first quadrant, and we'll call that, make a bigger dot here, we're going to call that x, y. And so to get to that point, we would have had to have gone out x, and we would have to go up y. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that point and connect it to the origin. So if we do that, maybe we'll redo that. Ah, oh, that's good enough. Okay, so we're making our right triangle, and we, let's make this a little bigger. This might be easier to see here if I do this. Okay, so what we're going to do is that is just some arbitrary length that does not have a sign. Only x and y can have a sign on the coordinate plane. So we're going to call that length r, and we can see that we've made a right triangle, and we can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem, right? That would say x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So, and if we just wanted r alone, we'll put in the blank here, this would be the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right. So now, let's look at that triangle. We can think about our three trig ratios. Sine, we know, let's make this a little bigger here, sine, we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we look back at our triangle, well, according to this angle that we've created here, what's opposite? Well, opposite is, where's my pointer? Opposite is right here. Why? Here's my angle. Here's opposite. So, and what is the hypotenuse? Well, r. So this would be y over r. Very important idea. Okay? Cos theta, same thing. Let's go back to our triangle. Let's go back and let's see. According to our angle, now here's our angle. What's adjacent? Right there. Right there. So, cos we know is so ka toa, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos would then be x over r, and finally tan, tan theta, we know is opposite over adjacent. So look at that angle theta. What's opposite? y. And what's adjacent? x. So this is a really important idea because now we can look at sine and cos and tan, and they can, be, they can actually be negative. We've never seen that before. But we know that the x-coordinate could be negative. Let's say I was over in quadrant 2, right? Let's say I was over here. Well, to get out to a point out here, x would need to be negative and y would be positive. So what would happen is sine would be positive because y is positive. Cos would be negative because x is negative out here. Um, and tan, we'd have to look at both the x and y. Tan would be negative because that positive y over that negative x would result in a negative number. So we're going to look at each quadrant and see what happens. Okay, so I've jumped down to quadrant one in the notes, which is actually on the right. We've sort of designed the notes to be set up like the quadrants. That's why we put that one on the right. So this is the top right-hand corner. And so if the terminal arm is in the top right-hand corner, then our x, y point would be somewhere out here. We would, right, we've made our terminal arm. Our terminal arm has gone through some angle. And I'm going to drop this down, and I'm going to make a right triangle. Remember, to get out to this point up here, we have to go out x. We have to go up y. And the length that's created from that point to the origin is just some arbitrary length r. But it doesn't really have a sign. Only x and y can have a sign. So... We, it's really called a scalar, and it doesn't have a sign. So in other words, r is always positive. So sine, again, is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to be y over r. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is x over r. And tan will end up being opposite over adjacent, so that's y over x. And that's the three ratios. So what's really important here is, well, what about the, what about the sign, the S-I-G-N sign? Are these ratios, will they be positive or negative? We have to sort of think about the X and the Y. Well, since Y is positive, right here's sign. We don't really care about the R. 
the R is always positive. So we look at the Y. Y is positive in quadrant one, and that makes sine positive in quadrant one. What about cos? Well, let's think about cos. Cos, cos is X over R. Well, what happens to the X in quadrant one? Well, we have to go out to the right, so X is positive. So that makes cos positive. And what about tan? Tan, now we've got to think about the X and the Y, and I have a positive over a positive, so that would all be positive. And that's what this A means. All the trig functions are actually positive in quadrant one. Um, now, what about, how does the theta relate, how is it related to the reference angle? Well, what happens is that the theta and the reference angle are the same if we're in quadrant one. Okay, now I've sort of moved over on the notes here, over to the left, and now we're going to look at quadrant two. So now we're going to say, well, what if that terminal arm, we start here on the initial arm, and what if that terminal arm went around and terminated in quadrant two? Oh, there's my arrow, it's a little bit weird. So there's my theta to get there. Uh, but again, right, what about, let's talk about the x and the y. So here's my x, here's my y, and here's my r. Well, things are different now in quadrant two, because the x is actually negative and the y is positive. Why is the x negative? Because we went out to the left. And why is, how come y is positive? Because we went up. So for example, a quadrant two point maybe would be negative three, seven. We have to go out to the left and we have to go up seven. Um, okay, so we want to talk about our sine cos tan again. Well, we still have, this is called the reference triangle. This angle in here is the reference angle. So the reference angle helps us do our SOHCAHTOA the only thing that will end up being different will be should this thing be positive or negative, and that'll totally depend on the quadrant that we're in. So for sine theta, sine theta, again, look at the, you know, what's opposite, and it's y. Sine theta will always be y over r, and cos theta will be x over r. Opposite over hypotenuse for sine, adjacent over hypotenuse for cos, and then tan is opposite over adjacent. So we kind of want to add these, you know, y over r, x over r, and y over x to our definitions, of sine, cos, and tan. Those will always be true now. But now we want to say, well, what about sine theta? Is it positive or negative? So what I'm going to do is I need to look at the y coordinate only, right? If sine is y over r and r is always positive, it's a scalar, so it's always positive, and only y can be positive or negative, we look, and in quadrant two, y, we have to go up, so sine theta is positive. It's greater than zero. What about cos theta? Now we're looking at x. So look at x. We had to go out to the left. So x is negative here. So if cos is a negative over a positive, cos is a negative value. Oh, I missed the zero there. That should be a zero. Tan theta is um, y over x. So now we have to be careful here. So tan theta is actually a positive for y and a negative for x. Well, if we take a positive divided by a negative, that always results in a negative number. So now we can look up at the top here. What is this S all about? What does that mean? Well, if you look at this, in quadrant two, only sine is positive. So that's why we have, um, th that's why we put the S there, because only sine will be positive. And if we look at theta now, what is the relationship between the theta and the theta r? So now what we're going to look at is, what's the relationship between this theta and the theta r? You know, if we knew one of them, could we find the other one? Well, we can see that, you know, if the terminal arm started here and it went around to here, that's 180 degrees. So what's the relationship between these two angles? Well, together they should be 180 degrees. So how can we use theta r? because that's sort of our angle in our right triangle. How can we use theta r to get theta? Well, what we're going to do is we'll just take 180 degrees and subtract our theta r, and that will be what the angle is. So, for example, if I knew that theta r was 30 degrees, then the theta would be 180 minus 30, which would be 150 degrees. Okay, now we're going to take our terminal arm and we're going to swing it into quadrant 3. So that, we'll put an arrow here, but I have a hard time matching that up. That's our theta to get there. We always want to connect that terminal arm to the nearest x-axis, making a right angle. And what we have in here is our theta r. A little squishy, but that's our theta r. Okay, so now, and that's our reference triangle. But again, you know, here's that x-y point on the coordinate plane. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. So... Here we've gone out x, we've gone down y, and here's r. Well, guess what? Sine theta, still y over r. Cos theta, still 
x over r, I hope my y doesn't look like an x on the sine theta, and tan theta is y over x. So really what we care about is what is the sine of each of these trig ratios? Well, if sine theta is y over r, I want to erase this y, I want to erase that and redraw it because it looks like an x and that's really important that I think about y. Okay, so the y value is negative, so in quadrant 3, which is where the terminal arm is, sine theta will be less than 0 because y is negative, right? What about cos theta? Well, cos theta is all about x and we're going out to the left, so cos theta is also negative, but tan theta, which is y over x, well, let's check this out, y is negative, right? Divided by x a negative. A negative divided by a negative we know is a positive and that makes tan positive in that quadrant. Well what's the relationship then between the theta, the theta is this guy, right, all the way from the initial arm to the terminal arm and theta r which is just this little angle in here. Well what I would have, if I wanted to get my theta with my theta r, I would have to go 180 degrees plus theta r. 180 plus theta r, 180 is going to take me from my initial arm to here, and then the theta r would take me the rest of the way to the terminal arm. So if I go 180 plus theta r, that will give me my theta. That's the relationship. Just about forgot one little thing in here. So if you take a look at the trig functions, only tan is positive, and hence the t for tan in quadrant 3, where this is all being, making up what's called the cast rule to help us remember which trig functions are positive in which quadrant. So only the t, e t for tan is positive in that quadrant. And finally, we're going to swing our terminal arm into quadrant 4, like so. So that's our, that's our theta, and we're going to connect the terminal arm to the nearest x-axis making our reference triangle, and there's our theta r. But notice, to get out to this point down here, we are still going out x, down y, and here is that arbitrary length r if we connect that point to the origin, and it's always a positive value. So go through again, sine theta is y over r, cos theta is x over r, tan theta is y over x. What's positive, what's negative? Well, we're over in quadrant 4, and x is positive. How do we get to this point? Well, x, we had to go out x, which is positive, and we had to go down y, which is a negative. So this is going to tell us all our trig functions. Sine theta is y over r, sine is negative, so sine, so sine is negative. Cos theta has to do with x. Let's look at x. x is positive, cos theta is positive. What about tan theta? Well, for tan theta, we have to consider both coordinates, y and x. Well, y is, tan is y over x, and y is negative, over x, which is positive, and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So we can see the only trig function which was positive was cos, and hence the c that's up here, which is part of our cast rule. What about the theta and the theta r? What's the relationship? Well, now, let's take my pointer here. We know going all the way around, right, all the way around is 360. We don't want to quite get there. We only want to get to here. So, how do we get our theta? Well, we're going to take 360 degrees and subtract our theta r, whatever that is. So let's say our reference angle was 30 degrees and we knew we were in the fourth quadrant. That would mean, so if this is 30 degrees, then how do we get this? Well, all the way around is 360, but I didn't want that 30 degrees as part of it, so this would be 330 degrees. All right, so let's go on in the notes here and try this question. So we've got the point negative 815. So let's start with that point. Where are we? Where is, whoops, I got the pointer here. Let's get the grab the pen. Uh, where is the point negative uh, 815? So to get to that point, we know we've got to go left 8, up 15, right? We had to go out negative 8. We have to go up 15. We're going to connect that. Uh, our terminal arm went through this angle, theta. Here's our theta r. So you'll notice that something is missing on this right triangle. If we want to start talking about sine, cos, and tan, I need opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, and I'm missing the hypotenuse. So we're going to do a little Pythagorean theorem here, and we could use 8 or negative 8. It doesn't matter. Um, 8 squared plus 15 squared is going to give us that r squared, and after a quick calculation, we can see that r is the root of 289, which gives us 
17. So this is a nice, nice Pythagorean triple that maybe you want to commit that to memory. That makes things a lot faster. All right. Notice for this question, we do not need to know what theta is, and nor are we going to find it. So we'll just go through and we'll say, what are our three trig ratios? Well, sine theta, we know the definition for that. It's opposite over hypotenuse, or in a coordinate plane, it's y over r. So we look at our triangle, well, what's y? It's 15. And what's r? 17. And we're done. We may want to just consider, you know, is sine positive over there in quadrant 2? It is, because y is positive. Let's go on to cos. Cos theta, we know cos theta is x over r. It's adjacent over hypotenuse, just like it always was, but it's x over r. We can think of that on the coordinate plane. So what is the value of cos theta? Well, this is negative 8 over 17. And notice x is negative. We had to go out to the left to get up here to this point. We had to go out to the left. Tan theta, which is y over x, right? What's the y? coordinate of that point? 15. And what's the x-coordinate? Negative 8. Notice, we would, have, we would not have even had to have calculated that hypotenuse. We could have just used the point itself, and that would have given us the answer. All right, next question. Des determine the exact value of cos of 135. I just want to direct your attention to this word here, exact. That means we're probably going to use a special triangle, although 135 obviously is not part of a special triangle. So let's draw that, a picture of an angle of 135 degrees and see where that gets us. So that would get us into quadrant 2, right? There's your 135 degrees. That's your theta. So the theta is 135 degrees. So the question is, well, what is that reference angle? Let's make our reference triangle. So how do we find that reference angle? Well, we know if we start from here and we go all the way to here, we know that's 180 degrees. And this is 135 degrees. So what's this little angle here? Well, all we need to do is go 180 minus 135 degrees, and we get 45 degrees, and that is our theta r is 45 degrees. So that's one of our special triangles. So let's take a look at our triangle, or maybe you've just memorized this ratio for cos of 45, or if you use the special triangle, we can see that according to 45 degrees, we have adjacent of 1, and we have hypotenuse of 2. Or some of you may have learned that that's the same as root 2 over 2. It doesn't matter which one you use, those are worth the same. So if I wanted to find the exact value of cos of 135, there's two parts to this. The first part is, well, is it positive or negative? We have to decide, look at the quadrant that we're in. We're in quadrant 2, so you can either use the cast rule, or you can decide about, think about the x. We're going to the left, so the x is negative. So the answer for this would be negative 1 over root 2, or negative root 2 over 2.